Hi guys, welcome to Thursday morning and we're going to be talking about some SEO today. Um, but before we get started, I need to know where people are chiming in from. I already see some people in the chat ready to get started, ready to just jump right into it. But I want to know where you guys are from because our presenters from Myrtle Beach. Um, and so I want to see if anyone's coming, guys, zooming in farther. Welcome to Thursday morning and we're going to be talking about some... All right, we got somebody from Philly. Here we go, Missouri. California is always representing every week. You guys are awesome. Washington, Nashville, Texas, always in the house. I mean, why not? And we got some of our peeps from Arizona. We always, you know, we represent as well. Awesome. Let's do this, you guys. All right. So since we're starting a little late, we were just going to jump right into this, you guys. So thanks for joining in. We are super happy to have Robin on um, to talk about SEO and something that a lot of people are really uncomfortable with, but they really want to learn um, to help with their business. Um, so just to go through a few details, guys, um, make sure you're commenting. Throughout the presentation, ask questions. We'll keep track of those. We're going to have a little bit of a Q&A at the end. Um, if we don't get to your question, you can always reach out to Robin, um, and she would love to answer your question. Um, this webinar is recorded, so if you have to log out or something's happening, um, we the link will be live right here so you can come back and rewatch it. Um, if you're having any technical issues, guys, at the end of the day, just reboot. It always seems to work. And if it doesn't, like I said, we're recording it. Um, so you can always come back and watch it. Um, so just a little bit about our um, presenter, Robin. Of course, she's an SEO expert. Um, she is a content writer. She's a photographer. She's a wife. She's a mom. She does it all. Okay, I wish I was I could do it all, but I can't. Um, but she loves to help photographers and creatives and entrepreneurs improve their SEO um, so that they're ranked on Google. So that's why we're here today. So she can teach you that, share her knowledge with you guys. Um, but she's been to United a few times for the website coaching and people come to her just to help with their Google. Um, but I am super excited all the way from Myrtle Beach, Robin. Hey guys, uh, so today we are going to just talk about uh, overall SEO for both your website and your blog. Um, I'm going to go through a few things, um, just a few overall things to make sure everybody understands kind of what we're talking about, and then I'm gonna, we're going to go over a few things that um, and I lo know a lot of people have had questions about, uh, and then at the end, if you guys have questions, then I'm happy to answer. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started. Um, so we're we're going to start with uh, what I'm calling the Google trifecta, uh, and that would be Google Search, Con Search Analytics, uh, Search Console, and then your Google Business Listing. Uh, and then we're going to talk about just keeping uh, your on-page SEO very simple, uh, talk about some things that need to be cleaned up, and then we're going to go over optimizing your blog. Uh, and just to give you uh, an idea of where I'm coming from, uh, so I've been... I've been in marketing for about 10 years. Uh, I started off working for uh, a real estate company and, a, and a, a home builder, and I was their marketing manager, so I just kind of covered everything. Uh, and so anytime I look at you know, SEO or content for somebody's site, I'm always thinking about the end goal, because these things are always, they're just tools to get us to the place where we need to get to go. So we could obsess over SEO all day long, trust me, and I could go over like spreadsheets and, and graphs and and we could really dig into it. But at the end of the day, you need to make sure that your site is just being found, um, that it is very user-friendly, uh, because at the end of the day, this is just a tool uh, to get people to your site, and your website is, is also a tool, and it's just your, one of your most powerful tools for getting clients. Um, so we'll go over some things on uh, how to, what to prioritize, um, just taking time and budget into consideration. Um, and then also, I've um, been a photographer for about 10 years, um, but really just doing this at the moment because COVID. All right. So we're going to start with the Google trifecta. So Google Analytics 
uh, it's just going to show it actually shows you a ton of information, but it shows you how to understand your audience behavior, where their audience is coming from. You can also use it to see how your site is performing. Uh, and then uh, you can also track goals, which I would always recommend. Uh, and I'm just going to kind of quickly show you uh, what you would normally see in Google Analytics. Uh, and so there's a ton of information. It's really easy to get lost in here. Um, but the, the main things that I always look at uh, are, so actually I'll start at the very beginning. So whenever you get into your, whenever you log into Google Analytics, and I'm using Crystal Lee Photography's Google Analytics, uh, and she actually just uh, relaunched a, her site, a new design, so there's probably all kinds of changes in here too. Um, so this is usually what you'll see whenever you first jump in. Uh, and it, it kind of just shows you the first seven days but I actually usually skip this dashboard. Um, one of the first things I look at is, uh, no, is it? you go to acquisition, you go to all traffic, and then source slash medium. It's going to show you where your where your traffic is, traffic is coming from, and it's broken into kind of categories. Um, so uh, Crystal actually gets most of her traffic from uh, from Google. Uh, and then the, last, the next one is direct slash none, which you always see, and that's either somebody just typing in your uh, your name or your domain directly, or uh, it's just not it's maybe not tracking that. Uh, and then the third one is actually Pinterest, and then Facebook, and Bing, because you know for nine people. Uh, one of the other things that I like to look at too is the referrals. So if you click on referrals, so this actually shows you all the traffic from other sites. So if other uh, like wedding vendors have linked to you and they're sending you a bunch of traffic. This is really helpful to know so you can so you can make sure that you are <laughs> so you can make sure that um, you know you're linking back to them if that's a vendor you want to work with and uh, just gives you a good idea of really kind of what's going on even offset too. Uh, the other one that I always look at is behavior and then go to site content and all pages. So this is uh, so this report actually shows you which pages on your site get the most traffic, and that's from anywhere. That is, um, you know, organic from social media. So it, it so all all traffic sources. But I like this because it shows you um, kind of what pages people are really trying to find and what they can easily find. So if you have a page that is really not showing up at all in here, and it's an important page, then that would that should tell you that you need to go look at your site and make sure that people can easily find it. Um, and then maybe it's a good idea to just promote it a little bit more on, on social media, make sure people are getting there. And if it's, a, if it's a page that really you didn't completely weren't expecting and you don't want people to actually see, it's maybe an old blog post, uh, that's when you should probably go uh, set up a redirect to maybe a, a more updated post, um, something that's a little bit more relevant. So this is so really just those two areas of Google Analytics, those can really help you figure out what's going on with your site. Uh, and the next one we look at is Google Search Console. So Google Search Console, um, the performance report only deals with organic traffic. Uh, it'll tell you um, it'll tell you how many people are clicking on your site uh, for certain keywords. Uh, it'll tell you which pages are showing up the most in search results. Uh, and you can also use it to correct some issues if you have any uh, have any problems. And it's not really as common, um, but if you have some Kind of spammy links. Sometimes you can uh, take care of those, and then uh, it'll actually, actually now it'll show you your site speed if you set it up. So I will show you that one too. And again, here's crystals. Uh, so when you log into Search Console, this is what you're going to see. So this top one is your um, this the performance. So this is uh, you know how many times pages are showing up in search results. The next one is coverage. Uh, so this is going to show you how many pages uh, Google can find. And actually, if you open that, uh, it'll tell you which ones are valid and which ones it's actually excluding. Uh, so sometimes you can go check that and just make sure that the pages are the pages that you want are are showing up. Um, but the one I look at most is the performance. Uh, so if you look at so total clicks, number of times that people have actually um, clicked on a page of your site in those search results. Uh, the impressions are the number of times that a page shows up in search results, whether it's clicked on or not. Uh, and then the position is the actual ranking. So you've got, 
10, 10 spots on the first page. Um, so 1 through 10 is on the first page, 11 through 20, second page, and on. Uh, so, and actually, this is this is an important point that I want to make for for everybody. So, I, I hear a lot of people trying to Google themselves uh, just to see where they're showing, um, but that's actually not going to give you an accurate representation of how you are ranking because Google will take into consideration your location, even if you're in incognito mode. Um, it'll take into consideration what other pages or sites you've looked at, which most likely you've looked at your own site a lot, so your site's probably going to show up sooner. Um, and then it also just look at different types of searches you've made in the past. So the most accurate way to really look at your rankings is this performance report in Search Console. Um, and so what I always do, um, so if you, uh, let's see, so if you actually uh, click on, so this queries is all the keywords that are coming up for Crystal. Um, but if you click on that, so it shows she's in 1 point, uh, like 1.6, it averages it out. Um, but I believe that means she's actually in one of the map results, maybe. Uh, and she has a brick and mortar uh, studio, so she does show up a lot in the in the map results. Um, I'm going to show something down a little bit more. So position five, that means that she's in the middle of that first page. So if I click on that, um, and then I click on pages, so it actually shows that she is uh, two of her pages are ranking for that keyword phrase, that Myrtle Beach engagement photographers. Um, so that tells me, and that, but this one is getting uh, more impressions. So that tells me that she's got two pages that are kind of competing with each other. Um, and so the, her home page is the one that might show up um, first. And then uh, the engagement gallery page is coming up right in the middle. Um, so the best way to see how you're actually ranking is to first go to those queries, click on them, and then see what, which pages are coming up for those queries to give you a good idea. And if you have multiple pages that are competing with each other, it's a good uh, it's a good time to look at the content you have on those pages and just see if you can uh, if there's something you can do to to make sure you clean that up. And the last one, so your Google business listing. Um, so your business listing um, that's the one where that allows you to verify your location. Um, and now you got you can actually um, you can show yourself as a service. Uh, like a service location rather than a physical location. Um, so if you don't have a, a physical studio, then you would uh, you would list yourself as a, a service location, uh, and you try to keep that as accurate. You don't want to add a bunch of you don't want to add like Los Angeles and then Myrtle Beach too, because um, that makes it a little bit confusing. So you want to set up your Google business listing um, as accurately as possible. And we will uh, actually we will go ahead and we'll look at Crystal's. She's really on the spot today. Oh, of course that's not coming up. Oh, Crystal, hold on. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so she when she set up her, when you set up your business listing, um, it's really, so this is going to affect your local SEO more than most things because um, this is what Google is really going to base uh, or, or reference whenever it tries to, find your, your business on other sites, um, just to make sure you're, it wants to know that your information is accurate um, and it's legitimate. So you wanna fill out that Google business listing as accurately and as, as much as you can. Uh, and so, so Crystal has done, she's done a great job. Um, she had, and she has 60 Google reviews, and again, that kinda helps um, add legitimacy. Uh, it adds legit legitimacy for Google and just for you know, potential clients. Um, it has your address, the correct hours, um, phone number, and then uh, right now, because of COVID, uh, Google is asking if you have any updates. So if you are keeping that updated, um, it just tells Google that this is fresh information. Uh, and hers actually also found uh, her social media. So it shows that res those reviews on Facebook. Uh, and then she has a, has her own description and then also links to Instagram. So what Google's going to do is find, it's going to use this information and reference, uh, try to find it on other sites. And the more sites that can kind of legitim legitimize uh, her business information, the better that is for local SEO. Um, and also, if you, uh, one of the, something else I've noticed, just keeping your photos uh, fresh on Google business listing and 
Uh, you can also create posts. Uh, so if you so if you create posts in so this remember when Google Plus tried to be a thing and uh, like as a social media uh, uh, social media option. Let's find. Uh, we're gonna find this one. Um, so Google Plus tried to be like a social media thing, and nobody really used it. Um, but you can still create posts in your Google business listing to keep uh, potential customers updated on uh, like any special offers you have, any changes to your business, um, and anything, I, like I would post anything big. So if you're published on uh, one of the other big sites, then that's I would actually share that there just to keep that fresh. And honestly, I've seen for, for the clients that we keep that updated, I've seen huge spikes uh, in their local SEO rankings. Um, so I would definitely recommend keeping that updated. So it's So if you take care of those three things, um, and it should give you all the information that you need to know about how you're ranking, how, you're, how your visitors are using your site, um, and it should help your local SEO as well. Okay. So, oh, and one more. Uh, no, we'll skip on. Uh, so we're going to talk about uh, just really on-page content and also those page titles and descriptions, which I know a lot of people usually have questions about. Um, and going through my notes. Um, so for your page titles and descriptions, you need to keep them keep them accurate um, and keep them descriptive, but they, they really need to be relevant to the, the page. Um, so you need to tell them who you are, what you do, uh, and tell them kind of why they should click on your page. Um, and again, it's important that you keep it relevant. So you, you want to try to attract clients that really are looking for you. Um, and you want to try to keep it um, Keep it descriptive, but it's you know it doesn't need to be super boring. You don't want to try to keyword stuff it. Um, but I'll actually quickly show you how we're gonna poor Crystal. We're gonna use her again. And all right, so this is so what I did was I searched for just all the pages that are being indexed by Google uh, for Crystal's site. And then that shows me how her page titles are showing up and how her descriptions are showing up. So if you notice, actually, her first uh, that first page description is actually getting cut off. Um, so you want to make sure that you are, you know, putting the most important information in the beginning of that page title, uh, and then you want to try to make sure that it is um, short and concise uh, as much as you can, because you have, if you also have to realize that this is probably going to be cut off even a little bit more on mobile. Um, so make sure. So if it cuts it off, it doesn't doesn't necessarily hurt your rankings, but you know those potential visitors are not seeing that. So we just need to make sure you're keeping that important information in the beginning. Uh, uh, and then, uh, so your on-page content, uh, really the same concept. Uh, we need to be clear about what services you offer, where you're located, um, and what kind of clients that you work with. And one of the one of the things that I see. And one of the issues that I see more than anything is people not including where they're located. Um, and I think sometimes they think that it, uh, it keeps them from getting hired in other places. Um, but it's, I, I don't think that it, that happens as often as, as really we think it does as photographers. And also as photographers, of course, we always, you know, we always want to be destination photographers. Um, but telling people where you're located is, is not going to keep you from that. Um, People kind of know if you, they pay you enough, you, you'll travel for them anyway. Um, so you need to make sure that on-page content is it really tells them about you. Um, it tells tells them, you know, really what what your style is, what kind of um, clients that you're working with, and how you like to work. Uh, and you need to kind of keep it uh, simple, and you need to keep it easily digestible, which means that you really don't want big paragraphs um, all over your site. Uh, you want to keep kind of break up some of those you know, some of those big paragraphs um, with the headings uh, and you know just things that if you easily scanned because people do, typically don't read through your entire page. Um, I mean if they do, they're clearly very interested at this point. but for most people, they're really just scanning to see if they can find usually where you're located, what kind of photography you do, 
And a lot of times they're looking for kind of price range. Um, and I realize it's, it's different for everybody on whether or not you want to include that. Um, but just to make sure that everything is easily scanned and read through. Uh, and so the nat and then the navigation. So the navigation is actually very important for both Google and your visitors. Um, so you should have your most important pages uh, in your navigation. You should have it very clear about what those pages are. Um, and I know sometimes, uh, for example, uh, if somebody's looking for your blog, uh, I know that you know sometimes we we word it differently. So might word it as uh, like journal or stories or. But that can be actually confusing for those visitors, um, and it can so that it actually might get clicked on less. Um, then you get get less traffic to those pages, which ultimately could actually hurt the rankings for those pages. Um, so you just want to make sure that it's very clear. Um, these pages are easy to find in navigation, um, and that it's it's uh, the main pages are visible. Uh, and then last thing, so. It, I know this doesn't. This actually doesn't directly have to do with SEO, but again, if we go back to the point that SEO is a tool, and you're really just trying to use that tool to get people to your site and then get them to hire you. Um, so let's let's say that your SEO is just awesome, and you've got all this traffic, and uh, you're being clear about what you do and where you're located. Um, so the last thing that you need to have on your site that's really important is that clear call to action. So you need to tell people what they need to do once you're at your site. Um, because it, otherwise, we've done all that work, all that um, SEO and all that you know, content uh, prep um, for nothing if they don't know how to hire you. Um, so make sure that they know how to contact you, uh, or if you have a form, that they can easily find that. We just need to make it very clear and easy for them. The next thing is just cleaning up your website. Um, so especially for sites that are older, uh, a lot of times they'll be we'll add new pages. Um, we will just kind of make changes, and then along the way we can. What usually happens is there's there's usually some broken links. Um, so then when your user clicks on it, you know they get to your 404 page and they really don't know where to go, um, or they might just go to a page that's no longer relevant. It's outdated. Um, so that is bad for the visitor, but it's also bad for Google Google because the way Google crawls your site. Um, is it go? It follows those links, so um, that's why the navigation is important. But it's also why it's important that you are linking to the other relevant main pages, and that you're keeping those links updated. Um, so if you do find that you have broken links, um, and there are some, actually there are, if you just you can actually just Google a broken link checker, and it'll um, there's a bunch of tools that can just scan your site um, and look for those broken links. Uh, and there's I'll actually show you really fast, I have a, oh, there you go, going back to Crystal site. Uh, um, so I have a, a, a Chrome extension that I can use to just kind of quickly look for any broken links that are on the pages. Um, so you can do it that way if you know you've really updated one page more than others and you just needed to, look how awesome her site is, by the way. <laughs> so she just updated it and it's like, it's like beautiful and, and I like looking at it. Um, so the so one of the extensions that I use sometimes is SEO Minion. Um, so it'll actually analyze your on-page SEO. So it'll look for it'll tell you what your uh, your page title and your description is. It'll tell you if it's a little long, Crystal. And then uh, it'll tell you tell you your heading tags. Um, we'll actually come back to that. And then it will check for broken links. Um, so once you do find a broken link, you can update it on the page, and then in case it is linked to elsewhere on your site from like a blog post, um, you can also redirect it. Um, and I will show you the redirect tool that I have. Um, I believe this one is just called redirection. There are a couple. Uh, so and actually, this redirection tool will look for um, it'll look for any uh, broken links, uh, and it'll prompt you to correct those. Um, so you can go ahead and oh, there probably there's no, there's probably some broken links somewhere. Um, anyway, it'll show you the the 404s. Um, I was just coding. We can ignore that. But if there's a bro if there's a, a link that is broken here, it'll show up, and you can go ahead and add a redirect. 
and then just put in that uh, that URL that you actually wanted to go to. And that way, if it's if any of those broken links or else are on the site, you've already cleaned it up, and then uh, your user experience is better, uh, and Google can can now be directed to the page it should be indexing. Um, and then, uh, similarly, any old pages, um, you should redirect. Any, so you should redirect any of your old pages to the newer relevant pages. Um, and you should also just always make sure that you have the most updated information on your pages. Um, so if you've changed prices, if you've changed, um, especially with COVID, if you've changed the way that you're doing shoots, um, you make sure that that information um, is, is just up to date. That way Google can find it and also your users can find it and then they're not going to be you know, messaging you about old pricing or something that they found. Um, and other thing, so the... So this has to do. This doesn't technically has to have to do with your website, um, but it is really important for SEO. Uh, you need to make sure that you're cleaning up your offsite profiles. So this includes your social media profiles, um, and your business listings, um, and so that includes if you've got list listing on, you know, the knot. Um, so you need to make sure that all the information that people can find that's not on your site uh, is consistent. So your uh, business name needs to be the same everywhere. Your website needs to be the same everywhere. Um, your address, your phone number, um, and you can do a quick search. And I'll actually show you how to do that. Uh, see. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm just looking for any mention of Crystal's name uh, or her domain. I think I actually have this um, like this search phrase in a blog post somewhere, and I can uh, link to it afterwards. And so what this is doing is looking for any mention of her name or her domain name, but it's leaving out any pages from her own site. So then all we're going to see right now are mentions of her site or her business on other sites. Um, so, that, so that means their, your Facebook is coming up, uh, and... So let's say, and then Wedding Wire, Hulu Frog, Yelp, um, uh, Instagram, DBB. So what uh, what Google does is it, like I mentioned before, it looks for um, it looks for all of this information, and if it's all over the place, if it's you know if you've moved and you've got different locations, but you haven't updated on other sites, um, Google can actually see that as less legitimate, and it's going to be less likely to show. Um, to have your site showing up in the rankings. Um, the other thing that it does, and this isn't really the best way, but it actually uh, it should show you any mentions on um, other blogs. So if you've been featured, um, and there's other ways you can go find and like find those links. Um, but sometimes you know wedding sites will maybe mention uh, mentioning a wedding vendor, but they might not link to you. So this is a good way to find it too. Um, so just making sure all these um, profiles are updated is very helpful. Uh, and, and that also means, uh, um, point for that, so I, one thing I see a lot is, um, especially with the Pinterest profiles, I've noticed that a lot of people have their business name in there and then they add keywords. Like in, as, and so when Google reads that, it's reading, you know, if Crystal did that, it would say Crystal Lee Photography and Newborn Photographer, Newborn and Wedding Photographer, and then that would Google would find that as like that's the that's the business name, which is clearly not. Um, those keywords don't really help you. Um, so it's more important just to keep that clean and keep that um, obvious about what the business name is. Okay, and so your blog, and I know this is usually a really big topic. Um, so so your blog should be used to communicate with your with potential clients and your current clients. So you should use it to, you can promote yourself, promote your latest work, um, but it also should be used to tell clients what to expect when they work with you. Um, and if you think about any common issues that you have with a clients, uh, you can clear them up with a blog post um, and it, it helps, it saves, saves you time and it saves um, confusion for, for clients, but it just, it also just gives really good valuable content for your blog. 
Um, so whenever you blog, you should blog with intent. There should be a reason for it. Um, and again, and so a, a good thing to remember too is that blogging isn't just for SEO. Uh, it does help and is, is really good for it. Um, but every blog post does not need to be there for SEO. So you, I mean, if you can, if you can optimize it for something, you should. But you know, it's it's okay to blog things if it's important, but um, but not necessarily for the SEO value. Um, but you should, whenever you do blog, um, if you should also think about what kind of content that your visitors are looking for, uh, and uh, just try to. Uh, uh, well, actually, we'll, let's go look at some categories. Um, so you should try to keep your keep those categories cleaned up and organized, and then any of your blog posts should always fit into one of those categories. And if they if it doesn't fit into a category, then you need to maybe second guess, you know, why you're putting why you're posting this. Um, is this something that is relevant? Does it belong here? Um, and if it does, you just need to find a good place for it. But it's important to keep the content on your blog organized as well. Uh, and then, and I'm going to go look at Crystal's blog now. So she also has her uh, blog categories uh, right up here so people can easily find those. Um, so all of her blog posts, I know that they do have to do with her services. So she's, uh, normally I think she's link linking from those blog posts to uh, the relevant page. So uh, a newborn newborn related post is going to also maybe link to that newborn page. Um, so that helps the visitor find, so if it's a potential client, then they found that work, they found your work and maybe they're interested in seeing more of your work. So that helps them find that main page. Uh, it can also help Google determine what kind of content is on your site. So if it's linked, if they're, that page is, that newborn post is linking to your, that newborn page, um, you can see that that is, you know, this organized content and like this is this is what this page is about rather than just using that content that's already on the page. And, uh, and like I said before, you should only blog what you think your visitors are going to want to read, not just to try to rank for, for Google. Um, and you can keep Google in mind when you're thinking of blog posts, but you also have to make sure that this is actually valuable, like th something that people are going to want to read. Um, so tips for, for brides and grooms planning their weddings, um, you know, just something that shows people how you, how you work, but also just adds, adds value to them. Uh, and one thing that always comes up is how to use your keywords in blog posts. Um, so whenever you think of keywords, especially for your blog posts, if you think of them more in like topics, um, it's a little bit easier to plan your content and it's a little bit easier to actually optimize. Uh, and I'll go ahead and pull up the blog post. Um, so this, so I'm going to show you Yoast, <laughs> but I can see in this post, uh, Yoast actually is giving away like a eh face. So, but we're going to look at it anyway and I'll explain why I kind of just, just left it like that. Um, so so Yoast is a plugin um, that actually I think should come in, come on everybody's site, even for the tier two um, uh, subscriptions. So Yoast is a tool to uh, try to keep your your content focused on a keyword phrase. Um, so for this one, I put in SEO tips for photographers. Um, so what Yoast is going to look for is uh, it wants to see this phrase all throughout the post. So it's looking to see if it's in the uh, page title in the major description um, throughout the content. It's going to see if it's in uh, like a heading. It also wants to see it in um, in alt text on an image. Um, so so whenever you do choose a phrase, um, you want to choose something that's pretty specific. Um, you don't want to try to rank multiple posts for the same keyword phrase. Um, but just keep in mind that this is a this is just a tool. So it's a it's a guideline. Um, this is not a hard and fast rule. So if you have some posts that like don't have the green light, it's it's okay. Um, you just need to make sure that your your content is um, that people can easily read it and they can easily understand what that post is about. Because that's really what this use tool is is trying to do. It's trying to make sure that you focus on this one topic. Um, 
so I, I do have a eh face on mine, and it's fine. Um, so one thing you can do with Yoast uh, is you can edit the snippet. Um, so it, so you can, so if I, if I hadn't written this, um, it would just be using the title that I put as the blog post. Um, but you can actually customize a little bit more, and then you can put a different meta description in here. And keep in mind, this is so that that SEO title and the SEO description; those are uh, what's going to show up in uh, the Google search results. Um, so this is how people are going to read it. So we actually need to write the um, this blog post title and the and the description for the visitor. Um, and Google actually doesn't really look at the description as much anymore, or at all, maybe. Um, it does look to see if those keywords in in the title. Um, but more than anything, it is going to pay more attention to how visitors are, like if visitors search for SEO tips for photographers and then they click on mine, that's going to tell Google that, hey, this is this post is probably relevant to this keyword phrase. Um, so that's why it should be written for the visitor. You want to kind of attract them and um, make sure that it, it is, makes sense to them and um, sounds attractive to them. Yes. Um, the other thing that you can do uh, and this doesn't have to do necessarily with SEO, but um, but social. So you can actually, of course, I haven't done it here. Um, but for social, you can go over here and you can actually set um, the image that shows up when you share it on on Facebook, rather than it just using that featured image. Uh, and then you can rewrite the title and the description for Facebook. Um, for other clients, I will usually write kind of a shorter type Facebook title and description, um, and I always uh, replace the image here. So that it's it's sized for Facebook and um, it's just something that people are expecting and they'll, so that they'll click on it. Um, the other thing you look at is readability, and I did get a green light on that one. Um, so it's just uh, it's looking for a few things, looking for a passive voice. Um, it so it so it would rather see active verbs uh, and we'd rather see less transition uh, words, and because that tells it that you have you don't have many run-on sentences because remember you need to kind of keep um, whenever you write you kind of need to keep it very it's easily digestible so shorter sentences um, people are more likely to read uh, and it, they're easy, it's easier to comprehend because they're probably reading quickly um, and the other thing it's looking for is uh, I guess the subheadings um, because those subheadings do break up the text uh, it's also looking for making sure there are no long paragraphs uh, and then no long um, sentences as well. So I have done a good job on that one. Um, but again, it's you know it, it gave me a green light on the readability. It gave me a orange and face for SEO analysis. And honestly, that's okay. Like I know this post um, performs better than any of the other posts, and I would think that that's because I have you know I've written this for somebody to read through. So I actually put a because it's a bit of a longer post. Um, I put actually a um, a table of contents in the beginning so they can just click through to the right section. Uh, I did put a call to action in there. I avoided really long paragraphs um, and I put uh, a couple of images in there to break up some of the text. I use it, used um, the subheadings to break it up as well and I maybe went a little overboard with these little graphics but it still broke them up so that it is, you can easily scan it. Um, one second. It is a little really long post, actually. Uh, and then putting, oh, this is actually, so if you go to this post, uh, it'll give you that phrase that I showed you earlier on how to show, how to look for your own, your own site uh, on other sites. Um, so as far as the keywords being used here, um, I did use them just in ways that made sense. Um, you don't ever want to use keywords so that they sound awkward. Like if you would feel uncomfortable saying it out loud, um, then it, you probably need to rewrite it. Because um, again, it's really just supposed to be for your visitors, not just for Google to find keywords. Uh, and and Google's Google's much smarter than us. Like it doesn't need those very obvious things to figure out what kind of content is on the page. Like it can, it's going to read through it. It's going to look for different things. Um, as long as as long as somebody can get to that page or that post, and they can easily figure out what that page is about, um, they can read through it, uh, and they get the information that they want, then it's mo it's more likely to rank well with Google. So just focus on the reader first, Google second. 
and then use, use Yoast as a guideline, not a hard and fast rule. So if, if Google does have like a little mad face, it's, you might want to go back and check some things. Um, and cover readability, the categories, and, uh, oh, actually one other thing I want to talk about, readability, because I know a lot of wedding photographers, um, like whenever you post a featured wedding, uh, usually what I see is, uh, in the beginning is usually if you've, if you've written a lot of content, which I know is hard to write unique content for every single wedding, um, but let's assume you have, usually what I'll see is like big paragraphs and then uh, like 70 images. Um, so what would be easier for your reader is if you kept those paragraphs shorter, um, if you broke it up with kind of headings to tell them like, uh, so if I would write a featured wedding post, what I would do is I'd start at the beginning of the wedding, like I can summarize and say, hey, this is, this is where the wedding was, like the venue name, uh, this is the style of the wedding, it was beautiful spring day or whatever it is. Um, and then I will, uh, so, and then the next section will maybe be about them getting ready. Uh, I might talk about their details and uh, I will have, I'll have like one image to go along with that. And then, uh, and then we'll move to the next section where there's one more image, maybe about the, uh, if they did a first look, I can kind of talk about the first look. It doesn't need to be long with short paragraph. And then the next one, talk about ceremony, have a ceremony image, talk about the ceremony, just move on. So I'm really just breaking up all that content with like one image in between so they can see kind of what kind of wedding it's like. It doesn't have to just be one. You can do like one to three. Um, but you don't want to get too crazy because what happens is you push all that content um, down on the page. And if people are, are looking for, they would like to actually read a little bit more about it, they're going to assume there's no more content because you've already you've put all these images there. Um, so break up that content with kind of one to three images in between uh, with headings that are descriptive. And then at the end, uh, I was so that list of like wedding vendors you worked with, I always put that as a bulleted list and I link to those wedding vendors. Uh, and linking to the wedding vendors is not going to hurt you at all. Um, uh, sometimes I think people think that that's going to uh, like diminish link juice or something, but that's it's not a thing. Um, so at the very end, you can have that bulleted list of wedding vendors you worked with. And then after that, you can put all... I wouldn't put 70, but all the other images that you want so people can actually scroll through and, and see these other images. Um, so again, that just kind of keeps that content easily digestible. It keeps them kind of entertained with your pretty pictures. Um, and it doesn't make it confusing as to where they need to go to find the next content. Uh, and then they, you also need to make sure you're uh, maybe optimizing those images for those blog posts, especially if you have like a bunch of them. So if you just kind of, if you resize them, um, you don't need to have them at file sizes that you could just, you could print a huge print and they'd be fine. Um, they need to be web sized images so that they're not going to, um, slow down that blog post. And uh, so categories and tags, and I kind of touched on that before. Um, uh, you need to make sure that you have, uh, categories that make sense. Um, you don't need, you probably don't need like 20 categories. Um, you can keep them more general topics. Um, so we're going to pick on Crystal again. And we've got, so she has, so she does, she does weddings and, and newborns and that's it. Um, but sometimes there are, there are shoots that come up that don't just fall under those two. So she has weddings, engagements, bridal, newborn, um, milestones, and then maternity. And really that's, those are the only ones that she should, she should need. So all her content should go under one of those categories. Um, and you want to try to, as much as possible, just keep uh, use one category per blog post. Sometimes it makes sense to have it under two, but as much as you can, try to just use one. And then the tags. So the tags I've seen for a lot of people, they get out of control. So they've got like, I've you know, I see people use like 15 tags that all have, you know, uh, like, San Francisco wedding photographer, San Francisco engagement photographer, like those, so those tags are really not helping you because one, it's like you're trying to make that blog rank for something that your main page is really trying to rank for. Um, and, and two, because it is obviously so kind of keyword stuffed and a, a little bit spammy, those tags probably are not going to rank. It's not going to help the blog post rank. Um, and what's going to happen is if you are allowing your site or Google to index your tags, 
now you've created all of these tag pages so that when you search for pages that are indexed on Google, you're going to get a ton of results because you've had all these tags indexed. So it doesn't help you. It just kind of makes it, it makes it a little bit messy. Um, so more than anything, we just need to keep, keep those tags cleaned up. And if actually for most people, what I will do is de-index the um, tags so that doesn't, it doesn't come up in Google at all. And then they can just use the tags um, if it makes sense for those readers. Because um, sometimes it does make sense if people are trying to look for um, weddings that are at a certain venue and you've got multiple. That is a time where it would make sense to have uh, a tag for that, for that specific menu. And if you, if you can make that easily found by your reader, they can go see all the weddings you've done there. Um, so just keep the category simple keep the tags way more simple and only use them if, you're, if your users are going to be able to use them. So if they can't even see your tags, there's, there's really no point in, in tagging them. Uh, oh, and we are, I had already run, run over Yoast because uh, it's a guideline, not a hard and fast rule, and Google doesn't care about your green lights. Uh, they've actually covered everything here. Um, so you're trying to think of uh, some common questions. Actually, are there any questions already about the blog post? All right. Yes, we actually have had a very live okay. <laughs> chat today, and we have a ton of questions. Um, okay. So we'll go over a few of them. Um, let's start at the beginning. Our first question was from Paige Vaughn Photo. Um, okay. She, her and a couple people ask, it's not showing position in their, I believe you said that was in the Google, Google Analytics? Google Search Console. Google Search Console. Do you know why that it would not be showing the position for them? Mm, it's hard. It's kind of hard to, without looking. I'm not sure why it would not show position okay. for them. What does it mean like it's, like it's not, oh, those keywords aren't coming up at all, maybe? Uh, maybe, they, I don't know. Just a couple of people said when you showed position on your um, example, um, it oh. just wasn't showing up for them. Okay. Um, let's see. Well, let me go back through it and just make sure. There we go. Uh, let's start over at the beginning. So if we're looking at, I think, Myrtle Beach maternity photographers. Mm -hmm. um, so it was... So you should be able to see there's a position, hers says 1.6. Mm -hmm. um, so that is, I mean, at the very top of page one. I'm not sure why it would not show up. I don't know how to answer that question. Yeah, no, <laughs> it's, okay. Sure it's okay, it's um, okay. But that was just a, thanks for re-showing that. So maybe they can go back through and maybe it'll show that for them. Um, okay. The second question that we have is from London Rodriguez. Um, okay. She said, for Google business listing, if we have mm -hmm. online services, um, we can put our location as multiple areas to show up in, um, mm -hmm. d to show up in different area searches um, if we service all over. So how would you say mm -hmm. that they should do that? Um, so if you have, okay, so I guess, so some situations of, Come in contact with. There are um, maybe photographers who some, they actually do. They they truly are kind of destination wedding or destination photographers, but they're mainly in like two different locations. Um, so that one is is a little bit tricky. So I, if you're in one location more like way more than the other, it makes sense to just have that one location. Um, there can be other ways to rank for the other location by. Um, adding, you know, content to your site specific to that location, those venues you work at. Um, uh, so you can do it that way. But for the Google business listing, because if you are in one location way more than the other, I would just keep it to one. And if it's like half and half, uh, it is a tricky one sometimes. Um, you can, you can, but you really shouldn't, you should try to keep it to a minimum. Um, so if you've just, if you have happened to travel to a few different places and maybe you've shot like four or five weddings there, um, to me that wouldn't merit adding that location to your business listing because you're, you're not located there. Um, and again, that's not going to keep you from ranking for that in other ways, but the business listing, that's going to affect your local SEO more than anything. 
Um, so putting the, those other locations are probably not going to help because it's also because it's also referencing that Google business listing against the other sites that you're at. So it, you would also have to have like profiles for those different locations. It just gets messy. Okay. Um, so my best advice is just to keep it to a minimum and try to rank for that location by putting other content that's actually relevant and helpful on your site. Okay, awesome. Um, and this question that's coming up next is actually asked by a couple of people. Um, mm -hmm. Should I do a Google listing if my business is completely online? Uh, yes, you should. Um, because it's, so for a while, I think, I mean, there was even, there was still SEO advice like a couple of years ago where I saw people, um, some SEO people were saying that you should have, you should have a physical location. Like you should find a way to have a physical location, but really Google has updated, uh, the way that it allows you to, to fill in the information for Google for, for your Google business listing, um, with people who are just only on, you know, are completely remote, um, so I think for, I think for my own, um, because I work with people, I actually work with people all throughout the U.S. and then I've had people in like Canada and England and then New Zealand. Mm -hmm. um, but like I'm not going to, I'm not going to include like New Zealand there. But I am, I do include just the United States with my business listing, mm -hmm. um, and it, it's, it might not be the always the best way to do it, but it just, you just want to fill these things out so that it's actually accurate. Um, so if you're filling it out accurately, uh, like, cause you really do service people all over, um, the United States because you're remote, I mean, Google's going to figure that out. Like if it's, especially if you're a service provider that is typically remote anyway. Yeah. Um, so just, so just keep it accurate. Awesome. Now this is a question from just a newbie that's never done Google analytics. What is just something brief, um, that they can do just to get it started, to get it set up? Um, so Okay, so for people who are probably, if you're just going to, if it's intimidating to go into Google Analytics and try to find that information, um, which is totally fair, um, then, so if you follow, so Show It does have the help tutorial on, on how to set up your Google Analytics, so how, how to find your, how to find the code that needs to go into your Show It site so it can track it. Um, so if, follow that tutorial first, but the other thing that I actually have Set up so there's uh, it's a plugin called um, SiteKit. Uh, so this gives like a very uh, simple version of your Google Analytics and your Search Console. Um, so if so if you know that if you just know realistically you're not going to go into Google Analytics all the time and look you're not going to look in Search Console, um, then uh, honestly this plugin is makes it very it's very digestible. Um, you can kind of check on it and if you if there are any like huge drops, you're going to see that, um, and it'll show you that for for both Search Console and Analytics. And actually, you can add a, you can include um, Google Ads as well. So when you go to set it up, um, it'll actually walk you through the setup. So as long as you start, as long as you have that code in Show It, uh, then Google Analytics will track it, and then you can use something like SiteKit to just look at the um, kind of bare minimum of that. Okay, awesome. Um, we have a question from Claudia dash Sam. So I'm assuming it's two people on there. Um, it says, um, so the reviews, they all show up based on the Google location referencing. Um, so it, you mean, uh, I, I'm assuming you're probably talking about like the, uh, I don't know, maybe Facebook reviews that came up too with crystals. Um, if that's what you're talking about, it's, so Google finds uses a lot of different things to let's find hers now. Um, actually, I don't know where hers is now. Okay. Um, so Google uses a lot of different information to try to find uh, information about about your business. So it will use the location. That's the easiest way. But it's also going to look for um, there's a, a bunch of other clues that it'll use to try to to, to find you. So that's so for for Facebook it. I guess if you don't have the same location, um, I'm sure it can still kind of find you, but it is much easier if you've got that location. And every, oh, and I, I guess if you're talking, I may be wondering about if you don't have that physical location. Um, it's actually, so it's also going to use your domain to kind of link all that information, which is why it's important to make sure you have your website domain updated everywhere. Okay, awesome. Um, 
We have so many questions. <laughs> um, so from Kristen Tudor, um, if you had someone post images to your Google business that aren't related to your business, do you know how to get rid of them? Uh, so off the top of my head, no. I know there. I'm sure there has to be a way to do that, but it's the Google wants users to be able to to share the, the photos. So it it wants it doesn't want you to be the only one who controls the information that's shared. So that's why it will is not going to remove reviews, Google reviews. Um, with the photos, uh, there might be a way to. I will you know I will write that down and I will answer that in a follow up blog post. So okay, I'll awesome. look into it. Awesome. Okay. Um, we have, uh, let's do two more questions. Um, mm -hmm. Google listing. What if you change your business specialization? Um, example from like a wedding photographer to including a boudoir um, photographer, like, and maybe including a different business name. All right. Well, the, so the different business name, if you're going to have, if you're going to have a separate business, um, you really need to have a, uh, the same profiles that you have for your first one for your second one. Um, so that's why it's, so if you're adding boudoir on there, to me, if you're a wedding photographer and you add like boudoir services, um, unless you absolutely do not want those links for, you know, maybe your, your clients tend to be a little bit more conservative and you're concerned about that. Um, if you absolutely want them separated, you really need to have separate business listings for both of those. Um, but if, it's but as far as like trying to rank for maybe boudoir photography um there's really no reason to separate that for that reason um so if you were adding boudoir on um i would there's actually in let's see where is it um so if you actually go into your the information you can actually add services uh in there so that google knows what you are actually offering and then your potential clients know what you're offering as well um so you can add so you can add those services, you can add that other category, uh, and then you can just add content onto your site, and it, it doesn't have to be a separate domain. In fact, it's usually better if you, you don't have a separate domain. So you can add another, you know, other content onto your wedding site uh, about the boudoir photography, and um, with that that content, um, with the by adding that service onto your other profiles to let people know that you offer this. And also sometimes by being linked to from, like if you're featured on, you know, a, a boudoir photography related site um, or just featured for your boudoir photographies, those three things, those will help you actually rank. Okay. Um, so. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Last question. Um, mm -hmm. This one is from Claudia Sam. And she corrected me. This, that's her whole name, and that's an awesome <laughs> name, you guys. Um, <laughs> um, she asked, would you have Google referencing for your homepage or also for the side pages uh, for, like, challenges you host or services you sell? And Google referencing? I guess. Yes. I'm not sure what that means. <laughs> uh, can she explain it? Um, let's see. She can follow up with that. I'll like I'll we'll hop okay. to another question. Okay. Um, okay. Send me that question later. I'll I'll add that and follow up too. To okay. There. Awesome. Yeah. Um, let me see. Um, regarding simple wording, is there any evidence that pricing is clearer and thus more clicked on than investment? Um. So uh, I can't can't give you hard evidence right the second on it, but I know that um, just from working on a bunch of different photographers' sites, that people are typically looking for pricing. So like especially for uh, especially for something like wedding photography because it is a bigger investment. Mm -hmm. um, when people are searching for a wedding photographer, that's like a more long term um, kind of research phase, I guess. Um, so usually. And I, I usually break it up and there's like three phases of that. That first one is where they are, they're just like, they're like flying through the internet, just like Googling wedding photographers and trying to, and that's why it's important to make sure you, they can easily scan and they know where you're located. Um, but a lot of times that beginning phase is also, they're looking, they are looking for pricing because they don't, nobody wants to ask, you know, um, send an inquiry and being told that somebody is too expensive for them. Just, it makes you feel bad. Mm -hmm. Um, 
So whenever they are first searching, typically they are looking for pricing. So uh, if for any of the sites that I've worked on that they do have a specific um, pricing page or they have a pricing on that wedding details page and um, they've mentioned the pricing in like the title, that that page does usually rank um, better than the other ones. Okay. Awesome. Well, we do have a lot other questions and I will send them your way. So that <laughs> you guys, she's doing a blog post and she's going to answer a lot of your questions. Sorry, we couldn't get to all of them today, but you guys, you had such awesome questions. Thank you for the engagement. Um, and we are going to, we're so happy to have you on today, Robin. You gave a ton of information to help people. I know the Google can be very, um, intimidating at times um, yeah. and so um, look out for that blog post guys um, but thanks for joining us today um, and we love to see you on the next webinar um, have a good day thank you guys thanks